Congressman Dan Crenshaw from Texas. Good morning, Congressman. How are you? Hey, good morning, Hugh. Good to be with you. You know, if uh, somehow Princeton and Texas survive to get to the final two in the NC2A, are you and Gallagher going to even talk to each other? Oh, boy. Um, it's going to be hard. I mean, I, I don't like to talk to Gallagher anyway. You know, he's being a more <laughs> marine You know, he just eats crayons in front of me all the time. It's weird. So no, I, I love Mike Gallagher. Just to be clear. He's on your show a lot. He's one of my best friends. So, uh, uh, yeah, we'll still, we'll still chat. I want to talk to you about Putin and Xi meeting. What do you take away from this? Is like Mussolini and Hitler getting get together in '36, and then within two years, they've got the Pact of Steel. How worried are you about this Russia-China-Iran alliance? We should all be worried. It, it is the new reality that we live in. It's it's look why I constantly make the argument. This is why you actually do have to care about what happened in Ukraine, and why you can't just be cozy with this idea that. Russia just blows through Ukraine, keeps their military intact, and, and arrives on NATO's borders, and everything will be fine. It's not in our interest, as so many people say. Um, it's bigger than that. Um, you know, well, one, Ukraine is not an insignificant country, but more importantly than that, uh, this is about an alliance, as you said, between Russia, China, North Korea, Iran. Uh, this is an unholy alliance that, that seeks to undermine an American-led uh, world order. And, and and for all the people who cry about globalism, these are the people who want globalism in the worst of ways, trust me. They're the ones who actually want to control the sovereignty of other countries and, and enforce their will on others and undermine our ability to, 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 at the very basic level, get the things that we want in global trade. Um, and of course, much more than that on a security level. So yeah, it should, it should worry us. And uh, it's only strong America leadership that that, that can prevent it. People like to say this, these words, peace through strength. Everybody says, well, that's what I'm for, peace through strength. We can't forget about the strength part, everybody. It actually does matter, and that is the hard part. You gotta it's the expensive part, too. Captain Hendricks, uh, Dr. Jerry Hendricks, has an essay in The Atlantic this month, which echoes what Mahan said in that uh, uh, very, very distinguished magazine in the 1890s. We are a sea power, and we got to build ships, and we're not doing it, so... Uh, Hendricks calls for a ships act. Do you think there's will in the Congress to seriously reorient towards the seas in the way that we need to do? I'm not, I'm not sure Congress is is the issue here. You know, we've we, we've managed to to allow our industrial base, whether it's shipbuilding or the defense industrial base, to be to be hollowed out over the years. There's a lot of complex reasons for that. Um, you know, and again, you're talking about Mike Gallagher. This is, this is one of one of his uh, fortes is, is really looking into this problem. Um, now, the problems with Congress are our inability to get um, predictable budgets in place in time, so that contracts can be put in place and some predictability can be given to the industry so that they can make the proper investments and, and build the things that we want. And we have these budget fights over defense versus non-defense spending. So. The Republicans still want to to build out our defense industry um, and and increase our defense spending, or or at least maintain some stability with our defense spending over time. But the fight always becomes, well, Democrats want to match that with non-defense, which we think is a complete waste of money. Um, it doesn't need to, that, those same excessive increases, and so th that's the kind of negotiation you'll see this year. And 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 our our main goal should be that it doesn't come at the expense. Of, of, of you know problematic contracting that, that now that the, the defense department has to face. So, Congressman, last question: When you talk to your sane members across the aisle, when they see Xi and Putin sitting down, do they think of the worst case scenario the way that we ought to always be obliged to think about worst case scenarios? Oh uh, yeah, no, I think there's definitely some security minded Democrats who who certainly think about that, um, and we've got to get together and figure out what what it is we collectively do about it. Um, again, I don't, I don't think there's a ton of pushback against a, a stronger Navy, stronger military, but we've got to get past some of these other silly political fights that uh, prevent us from, from doing what we all actually want to do. Do you, do you think neo-isolationism is a real or an overstated problem in the Republican Party? I think it's clearly very real. Um, it always has been real. I, I think a lot of it has to do with um, political contrarianism. Okay, you know, because, because the same people who are, who are hyper isolationists at the moment uh, were, were, were happy to beat the war drum if Trump was beating it. 
so you know, I, I don't take their philosophy or, or set of principles too seriously. Um, it does depend on who's in power, and a lot of it is just being against the the, the guy who's doing it. Um, Got it. So I, I, that's either good news or bad news, depending on how you want to interpret it. But look, of course, it's a problem, and it stems from a, another deep problem, which is a misinterpretation of the world we live in. The reality of the world we live in is that it's extremely small, and it takes nine hours to get to this war just across the world. It used to take six months. You could feel an isolationist when it took six months to get to Europe. It doesn't take six months anymore. It takes and a hypersonic take. Did you hear Mon Montgomery, Admiral Montgomery's speech at the Republican caucus? Uh, no, I, no, I didn't. But, but, your, but your point on hypersonics is well taken. Take yeah, nine time. minutes. Not, yeah. not nine months anymore. Six months is nine minutes. Uh, Representative Dan Crenshaw, follow him on Twitter at Dan Crenshaw. Keep coming back. Thank you for doing so.